Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I like to talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today I'm going to be covering the titles that I picked up over on my trip over to the UK. This is my second trip. A few years ago, I was able to uh, meet my, my good buddies, uh, Sam, Chris, and Davey, um, and I did it again, and I was able to come over uh, during the summer and uh, just, you know, visit them and honestly just hang out. Uh, I didn't actually <laughs> shoot any footage uh, of our travels as we're going to like HMV or FOP, um, be, just because I just wanted to just be around them um, and just hang out in the space itself. So none of that footage, unfortunately, for some of those people from last time. Um, but today we're going to be covering a lot of the titles that I picked up. Uh, I have watched quite a bit of them actually already. Uh, I'm going to go in depth with them a little bit more as I'm doing a new journal uh, where I'm going to be going uh, through a weekly journal. I did a video um, not too long ago, literally this week, uh, if you want to go check that out in the description, uh, kind of talking about the trajectory of the channel. So with that being said, I'm going to be covering a lot of those uh, titles that I'm going to be covering today a little bit more in depth um, later on, obviously next week. Hopefully that wasn't so confusing, so let's just jump right into the titles. I'll kind of go in chronological order of the places and the people that I was around uh, and the things that we've done. So I'm really excited to cover uh, the the travels to the UK, uh, going to London, all the way to Manchester and back. So let's jump into the titles that I picked up and let's go in the order of operations. I'll do a little caveat here uh, just because I actually was able to watch several shows on my travels. I was able to watch episodes here and there of different things like Doctor Who, uh, Inside Number 9. At, and Twin Peaks, which we'll talk about later on. So there's a lot of stuff to cover there. Um, but one of the shows that I was able to watch, and I was able to watch the entire thing um, with my buddy Sam, is Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Holy moly, this <laughs> this show is uh, insanely up my alley. Uh, if you're a fan of Toast of London, uh, kind of Channel 4, BBC uh, originals uh, during this time, you're gonna love this show. So it's it's literally the set like a soap opera mixed in with uh, some like Lovecraftian horror <laughs> and science fiction uh, crafted into this hospital uh, kind of um, spoof of sorts. It's it's just so much fun. Um, this is very much like Monty Python meets that uh, that horror spoof, but like it's just so ridiculous. I mean, there's there's people in here looking at the camera uh, and saying absurd things. But there's only six episodes. I was able to watch them all with Sam. These are, this is terrific. Uh, it's got an all-star cast. Um, you can see just right there. There's Matt Berry right there. Uh, that's, that's what sold me on it, right? Uh, and he's just a small little part of that film, uh, film crew. So anyway, thank you so much, Sam, for getting this on my mind and I'm able to watch it. I can't wait for the special features. I've heard the audio commentary is terrific. So if you're into, uh, you know, slapstick kind of comedy and very absurdist kind of stuff, check out Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. I'm so stoked to have this. I ordered it immediately as we were watching it. All right, so let's jump into my first kind of go around. I was able to go to the FOP in London with my buddy Sam. I was also go, able to go to the HMV. I think it just reopened. Uh, last time, I don't think it was open uh, a couple years back, but I was able to get a few titles and I'll kind of cover a little bit of some of them uh, and kind of explain why I picked them up. So the first title I have here is one that Sam recommended, and this is actually the first film that I watched on my way back, so I'll cover that more in my journal. But I was actually uh, able to sell Michelle Savoy, I hope I said that correctly, Stage Fright. Uh, this is from Shameless Screen Entertainment. Um, I really love the yellow uh, here. This is such a unique um, little line of films. It looks like a lot of video nasties, uh, if you will, uh, just based on the line. I haven't really checked out much uh, from them. I was able to browse uh, on it, but um, this is a fantastic film. Um, this is, um, I was able to watch The Church not too long ago, and I really loved that, and I, I was pretty much told to watch this. And I'll, I'll get more in depth with this film, but it's a really fun slasher. Um, I highly recommend it. It's it, it surprised me. It has some really fantastic kills, and I definitely recommend checking that one out. Uh, and next is another film that uh, was a recommendation from Sam. He actually, this was like right next to it, and actually still had plastic on it. But I was able to pick up The Three Burials of Beliquades Estrada by Tommy Lee Jones. So this is a modern western, uh, came out kind of in, I think, the mid-2000s. Yeah, and I, I don't really know much about this, but I'm a huge fan of modern westerns, like 310 to Yuma, 
or something like Bone Tomahawk. So I, I have a feeling it's kind of somewhere in that line. But this is from 101 Films. Very curious to check it out. Very excited to, to dive into that. So thank you, Sam, for that recommendation. Another recommendation was a film from Radiance Films. This is Spy Number 62. Um, I love Radiance. They're all right there, um, if you can see them. But um, I was able to pick up uh, Trinku La Quen. I probably said that incorrectly. It is a, um, I believe, Spanish-speaking film. Uh, it's set into two parts. So it's 135 minutes plus 139 minutes. Um, but it's it looks surreal. I, the way it was described to me, um, it, it's definitely something that's going to be a treat to watch. And so I'm very curious about this. Uh, it came out in 2022, so not that long ago. But I'm very, very curious about it, um, about these two men and this relationship with this woman who's suddenly disappeared. Um, that's just kind of a brief synopsis. I haven't seen it yet, so I, I don't know much about it, but I'm very curious about it. Another Radiance release that I was able to pick up was something that I thought was kind of going out of print, but I guess not, and I was able to pick it up at the HMV over in London, and I was talking about the Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter trilogy right here. <laughs> Can't talk. Um, obviously, we have uh, Ozawa um, and each... Ich and Kudo, who are the directors. I'm going to butcher the Japanese names, but um, this reminds me a lot of like Lone Wolf and Cub uh, type samurai films, and that's exactly why I was definitely interested in picking this up. I, I, I adore those films, uh, and this looks like really fantastic films from the late 60s to the 1972. Um, I've heard that The Killer's Mission is the film to watch out of these three, um, but there's The Fort of Death and Eight Men to Kill. So spine number 46 and 47 right here. I'm very curious about this, and Radiance keeps putting out fantastic release. Um, thank you, Fran, uh, for putting out so so many good releases. All right, next I'm going to talk about three Second Sight releases. I actually was able to watch them all, and I've seen several of them a few times before, at least one of them. Um, but I'll jump more into that in my journal when I do that later on. But the first one I want to mention is the standard release of Ganjam Haunted Asylum. Terrific found footage uh, Korean film. It came out not that long ago, 2018, I believe. Yeah, um, I've been wanting to pick this one up for a very, very, very long time. I've heard nothing but great things, and uh, it definitely did not disappoint. And I'll get more into that, like I said, in the journal. But this is a terrific release with uh, some fantastic special features. Uh, speaking of a terrific release, one that I've slept on for far too long, uh, I was able to finally watch Raw right here. I have the standard release uh, of Raw from Second Sight. Um, this is the director of Tatain. Uh, which I absolutely adored. Um, what a wild film. Set, same with this, um, of two, a coming-of-age story um, of, of a vegetarian kind of becoming a cannibal of, in some sorts. Uh, and I'll get more into that, like I said, later. But, man, what a terrific film. This is definitely one of the best films that I have watched so far from this pile of stuff that I've picked up. And this one I'm going to have to re uh, you know, get back to. It's got a lot of layers to it, and I'm very excited to, to dive into that. Uh, I've got to have the stomach for it, though, first, right? And next is actually a film that came out during the height of COVID. Unfortunately, I use that word, so you see what YouTube does. Um, but uh, this is overall a Zoom call. It is a haunted Zoom call. This is such a creative endeavor. I'm talking about the movie Host. So I was able to watch this on Shudder when it came out. Um, it's a very short film. It came out, it's 57 minutes long, so it's literally less than an hour. But it is a really cool take on a seance and modern technology. And... Uh, yeah, there's some things that are awry where they're just all maybe goofing off and maybe disrespecting the spirits. So um, I'll talk more about my journey with Host um, a little bit later, but terrific release. I love the special features on here as well. Um, Second Sight is always terrific in terms of their, their stuff. So let's keep jumping into more some stuff from London. All right, so also on my travels, I was able to go to the BFI South Bank, and I didn't watch any films there, unfortunately, but my buddy Sam and I definitely wanted to at least check it out. I did. <laughs> I pressured him to go there. Uh, so I picked up two releases here. Uh, they're rather expensive. Obviously, it's it's a movie theater, you know, uh, of sorts. So I've, obviously, I spent a little bit more money, but I think for these releases, this was like a terrific kind of memory for me. But the first one I want to talk about is the Adam Egan box set right here from Curzon Artificial Eye. I believe this thing was out of print, uh, and that's exactly why Sam kind of put it in my uh, direction. Is like, hey, this is here. Pick it up if you, if you want it. Uh, I have not seen any of the films in here. I know Exotica is out on Criterion, and but I've heard nothing but fantastic things about Adam Egan. Uh, several commenters in the past have talked about his work, 
and I'm super excited about diving into the filmography of these films. So just to mention these real quick, Next of Kin came out in 1984, Family Viewing in 1988, Speaking Parts in 1989, The Adjuster in 1991, Calendar in 1993, Exotica, like I previously mentioned in 94, and The Sweet Hereafter in 97. So I'm very curious about this, love this release, um, glad I finally have it. I got it for a, a decent, a pretty penny, but it was, it was worth it, and I'm very curious about this and very excited to jump in. The other thing that I picked up when I was there was a release that just kind of caught my eye. I just was really drawn to the cover, and I guess this is um, an artist rendition of this film, but I'm talking about Clara Sola right here. So I am actually not familiar with this line of uh, boutique label, but it's Piccadillo Panorama release. And this is a film that came out in 2020. I don't know what year it came out. Um, not that long ago, I don't feel like. But um, regardless, uh, this is a film that very much like uh, the Radiance release that I had mentioned earlier, this one looks like it's going to be a surreal tale of a woman uh, kind of finding her identity um, and through religious and sexual experiences. But I don't really know much about it. I just read the cover. And also, apparently, this has a really cool poster with it as well. And so I'm really curious about this. I'm definitely going to be jumping in to this plus um, the the film that I can't, <laughs> can't mention. But this is the poster. It's the poster of that original art that I showed you. But this just looks terrific. And I'm very, very uh, curious about diving into this. Has anyone seen this movie? I'd love to know what your thoughts on uh, down in the comment section down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. So transitioning from England, I was able to go to Scotland uh, just for literally a brief second. Um, I just, my trip wasn't able to accommodate all that uh, too much, unfortunately, but I was able to see my buddy Davey and I love seeing you pal. And I'm glad that we were able to watch so many fun things uh, like Inside Number Nine, Doctor Who. Uh, we just laughed the entire time, but he actually got me this release a few i think last year when network was announced that they were going out of business luckily there's a lot of network stuff still at hmv and fop but i was able to get the the t television adaptation of the woman in black from 89 i believe and i'm very curious about this i love the daniel radcliffe adaptation and uh, i definitely just wanted to pick something up from that uh, la you know that network's end because I, I really love the you know the boutique label that they they put out a lot of fantastic stuff like the up series and the story of film and so i'm just definitely very very curious about this film so davy thank you so much for picking this up for me from last year i, I appreciate you pal and i love seeing you and i can't wait to see you again all right so let's transition from scotland over to northern ireland when i went over to belfast to see my buddy chris and we went over to the hmv over in Belfast and got quite a bit of titles. I uh, kind of, <laughs> this is where I decided, you know what, screw it, I'm on vacation, let's get some stuff and let's throw that uh, stuff out of the window. So the first thing that he recommended, we actually were looking at the BFI flip side, there was a sale going on. And so I picked up The Appointment and I also picked up Deep End. I've seen The Appointment and this is a terrific film along with the film The Lake and I can't wait to talk to you more about it on my journal. But man, what a surreal film. I actually, this would be a great pairing with The Dead Zone, which I actually watched on the plane back, uh, the Christopher Walken film from Cronenberg. Man, this is just a fantastic film by Lindsay J. Vickers, G. Vickers, and it's starring Edward Woodward from The Wicker Man. So, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm already sold. But this is such a terrific English oddity, but like, uh, it, it's a masterful thing. And I definitely recommend people check this out. This has got some of the best camera work and like budget um, tightness that uh, they, they stretched the budget enough to where they they made it a, just a really fantastic film. We'll talk about that more later. Haven't seen Deep End, uh, another film that I've been wanting to watch, another uh, English film of the 70s. I think this is like a very transitory time for England uh, and it's a very sexual awakening, uh, as you can kind of tell from the cover, right? Um, but it's about uh, two people who kind of meet in, in run down London in a swimming bath um, and uh, just looks really curious. But Chris told me about it and said, hey, this would be something to uh, check out. So I was able to get both of those releases, and I was very happy about that. I need to check out more BFI flip side releases. I know that's a lot more of the very narrow and very specific type things. So let's move on to Mubi. Uh, Mubi, I got quite a bit of releases. I just love, I adore this line quite a bit. I just love the 
the marketing on it, even though there's not many special features on these discs, I think they're terrific releases nonetheless, and I'm super curious about a lot of them. First, I'll talk about a film that I actually watched um, on my journey, and I'll talk about more on my journal, but I watched Benedetta, Paul Verhoeven's, um, you know, d d you know uh, sinful nun film. Terrific film. Love the special effects in here too, even though it's a little cheesy, but at the same time, it's it's surreal in the sense that like I didn't expect it to to be that way. People either love or hate this film, but I really adored it, and I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, it's a very sensational uh, film, but um, yeah, this is a really, really great release, and uh, if you're curious or like Paul Verhoeven, definitely check this film out. We'll talk about it more later. Uh, another release that I picked up is one that I've been wanting to watch for quite some time. It's got such a, I feel like a crazy history. I think, I, I don't know what the studio interference with a lot of this stuff was, but talking about Under the Silver Lake with Andrew Garfield and Riley Co. I think I said their name correctly. But I, I've been wanting to watch this movie for quite some time, ever saw, ever since I saw the trailer uh, from A24 um, years and years ago, and then, it, you know, it kind of disappeared with, like I said, all the marketing and all the studio kind of things going on. Crazy, crazy release, but um, I've heard fantastic things from my buddy Elliot, I know, who really enjoys this film, and uh, a lot of other people that I've talked to. So, Under the Silver Lake, I was able to finally pick that up. One that I was able to see the trailer for at my local independent cinema where I was like, I'm definitely going to watch that, but I don't think I had the time to watch it. But I'm talking about Close that came out a few years back. Um, this is a French uh, film, and it is about two young boys who are best friends, who kind of become more than best friends, but in a very um, interesting, uh, uh, you know, kind of beautiful way. And so I'm very curious about this. The trailer, like I said, was very captivating, so it definitely looks like a story that... Uh, is right up my alley and uh, something that I'm very curious about. So close. Definitely checking that one out soon. Next is a 4K I got from Mubi. My first 4K from Mubi. But I was able to finally pick this up. And it's definitely one of the best films from, uh, I think, last year. 2022, maybe. <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, it's Decision to Leave. It's uh, Park Chan-wook's film. Adore this director. And I've been wanting to watch this for a while. And so was able to pick it up over in HMV in Belfast, and I cannot wait to see this movie. I've heard nothing but incredible things about this film, and I'm very curious about it. Okay, so let's move on to a few titles that uh, are from Studio Canal. Um, I actually have a, a funny story with one of them. I'll, I'll send that one for the last, but the first one I want to talk about is Cross of Iron from Sam Peckinpah with a great cast, uh, James Coburn, uh, Stenza Berger, Maximilian Schell, David Warner and James Mason, to, to name the least. This is a war film from Peck and Paw. I've only seen the westerns from from Sam Peck and Paw, so I only really know those films. Uh, Alfredo Garcia is probably my favorite. I do enjoy The Wild Bunch, but I've this was a good recommendation from Chris. He's like, yeah, t check this movie out, and it was on sale. So got Cross of Iron on 4K. So curious about this, and very excited about that one. The other film that I picked up was a recommendation from KB, but I already knew these directors, and so I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to give this myself as well. I'm talking about The Small Black Room from Powell and Pressburger. So this came out in 1949, I believe, and is, uh, I mean, it's Powell and Pressburger. I, I, I adore everything that I've seen from them so far, so this is a new restoration from Studio Canal. Uh, this is just the Blu-ray. I did not get the 4K, the cool edition of it. Uh, I did not see it but I'm very, very excited to dive into this film uh, and just kind of get my get lost in the melodrama uh, of this, like, war drama. of, of war, war drama, like romance, probably. That's just what Powell and Pressburger do. Um, next is actually one where I got this backwards here, but I have this both here. I have the three and the four musketeers. So, ironically, I got the four musketeers in Belfast, and I told... I think I told Davey earlier that I picked this up and he's like, did you get three Musketeers? And I'm like, I didn't see it. And, and then I, and he's like, we'll, we'll pick it up. And then in Manchester, which we'll get to later, I picked up the three Musketeers. So I was able to pick up these two releases from Studio Canal. And yeah, I mean, I just been wanting to watch these movies for the longest time. I remember reading the book, um, years and years ago, I think in high school, I believe, but what a cast. And I guess this was filmed back to back, but it's got Oliver Reed, Raquel, uh, Raquel, Welch, uh, Richard Tamberlin, Michael York, Frank Finley, Geraldine Chaplin, Simone Ward, Faye Dunaway, and Charlton Heston. <sighs> what an insane cast. 
Uh, I heard that these these movies um, were terrifically made, but I think that the people who are involved in this were, I think, only paid for one film, and it was back-to-back. -back. It's kind of wild, but this came out in 1973 and 1974, respectively. But I've been wanting to watch those for some time now. Uh, let's go back to Belfast real quick. Uh, I was able to uh, also pick up The Last Rifleman, a uh, new Pierce Brosnan film of a World War II veteran who fought on D-Day. And um, this looks just like a really charming, but also like, it's like a dramedy, probably, of some sorts. I'm sure it just looks like a really um, fun film. I don't know how to describe it, if that's the, the word I'm going to use. But it looks like a film that is right up my alley and one that I'll watch in an afternoon. Um, but it's got... Uh, Clemency, uh, Clements Posey and John Amos. Uh, Clements I like from In Bruges quite a bit. But I'm just curious about it. Pierce Brosnan, the first Bond that I ever really, you know, delved in, in deep with. Um, but this just looks like a, a really nice treat of a film. It also probably could be very sad. So I'm, I'm, I'm up into anything. And the other thing I actually was able to pick up was Upgrade on this, uh, this new uh, Blu-ray right here. And uh, I was actually, uh, I've seen this movie before. I was able to upgrade my copy uh, and uh, get this on Second Sight's release. I'm very curious about seeing the special features, the new stuff that I haven't seen uh, from the film. But we'll we'll delve into that more as we get along. But I'm, I'm very excited about checking uh, this this movie out again. Uh, I really enjoyed the, the camera work and the kind of the, the first person angle of the whole movie. It's just a fun film. And uh, it's a really cool science fiction film that I think... A lot of people don't really talk about it enough. All right, so let's transition away from Belfast as I made my way over to Manchester. And this is where I lost my mind and decided to kind of raid both FOP and HMV. And man, oh man, did I find a bunch of titles that I wanted. <laughs> and I realized I didn't have enough uh, in my suitcase probably to do this, but I did it anyway. So let's just talk about some of the films that I picked up. Uh, and like I said, I'll go more in depth with them on my journal uh, journey as I go through them. But I was able to pick up the Truth from Hir uh, Hirokazu Koreeda, who I am a huge fan of. Uh, his work, this is a fantastic Japanese director, and everything that he's done it has been a, just an absolute treat. I really love the Family Values trilogy that I have from Arrow, um, but this is starring Catherine Deneuve, uh, Juliette, Juliette Binoche, we'll see her again, and Ethan Hawke, and I just adore those actors, and so I wanted to pick this up. It's Koreeda and plus those actors, but it just looks like a really... Um, lovely film about just, um, I guess, trauma and family, and very curious about the truth. So the next movie I want to mention is one that I've only was able to see one of his films before, but I was actually kind of half in and out of sleep, so I felt really bad about it. Sorry, Palmer, my good buddy. Uh, I picked up A Peach Pong's Cemetery of Splendor. I don't know how to say A Peach Pong's last name, but wow oh wow um this is a film that has been in my mind for like 10 years i actually think i saw this on a video essay uh years and years ago this actually came out in 2015 so it's about nine years ago okay i remember when this came out uh, watching that film essay and talking about this film in particular and how just gorgeously melancholic and bleak this movie is but at the same time i, I yeah i'm just i haven't seen it but i'm very curious about it has anyone seen Cemetery of Splendor? Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, it's going to be probably a very transcendental experience for me, I'm sure, when I check it out. But I finally was able to pick it up on disc. Next is another Studio Canal I was able to get the 4K of, but I did not get the cool special edition of. But it is a brand new restoration of Kind Hearts and Coronets by Robert Hammer. Uh, I don't really know much about this. It came out in 49 as well, I believe. A lot of movies from 1949 this this go around but um this is the best film in the world it looks like just a really raunchous kind of time it looks like a kind of a a comedy of sorts uh coming of age um comedy and it just looks delightful so it's also got alec guinness in it who i am a huge fan of obviously obi-wan and whatnot and uh <laughs> bridge on the river Kwai. but just really really curious about this movie um and i i, I wanted to check it out next is a movie that i was able to see the trailer for at my local independent cinema and I actually just watched this last night so we'll get more in depth with it uh, as we go along but I'm talking about A Taste of Things that came out a few years ago um, it's directed by Tran Ong Hung uh, it's got Juliette Binoche which I mentioned earlier and it's got Benoit uh, Megamel and 
man, this is such a delightful film. It's like Babette's Feast with Howard's End kind of combination of things. And we'll, we'll talk about more of that, but like this movie will make you hungry uh, as you're watching it. Um, and there's some other twists and turns in it, um, but it, it's such a lovely piece of work, and I definitely recommend people check this movie out. And do not... Uh, watch this on an empty stomach. All right, so next we're going to go to Ken Russell. I actually was able to pick up one title and then realized that uh, I probably should pick up a few. Uh, and the first one I want to mention is Vestron Video's The Lair of the White Worm. Man, what a terrific film. Uh, I just watched this this morning. We'll talk about it more later. But, man, this is an absolutely insane film. This is my first Ken Russell movie that I watched, too. So I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, it's going to be a weird trip. I already know that. But Lair of the White Worm on Vestron Video, great release. Hugh Grant's in it. Uh, Amanda Donahoe, um, she's terrific in it. Catherine Oxenberg and Peter Capaldi, who's also terrific in this film. But man, man, this is such a great film. Um, definitely recommend people check that one out. A, a release, speaking of Ken Russell, a release that my friend Davey was like, this is a movie to check out, a movie to watch and pick up because it's one of the best discs from last year, is BFI's Gothic. And I don't really know much about it. It's definitely got some Lord Byron um, related things going on here. So I'm very curious from a literary perspective, but from Ken Russell's perspective as well. So I don't really know much about this, this movie, but I've heard it's got terrific special features and it's a terrific disc. So um, Davey, you've not let me down so far. So let's watch Gothic later. Next is a movie, uh, another movie from Mubi, and one that I can't talk much about, but it is of the adult film industry, and I'm talking about Pleasure. Uh, this is directed by uh, Nija, uh, Thurn, uh, Ninja Thyberg. I don't know if that's how you say her, uh, her name, but this is about the adult industry. Uh, it's starring Sophia Capel, as she's a Swedish um, woman who's coming over to America to join in this industry. And uh, kind of goes through so much hell, uh, but also at the same time, it's a little invigorating in terms of independence and ownership. And there's just a lot of layers to this film, more than it's just, you know, it's an adult film, right? Um, so I think it's a little bit more than that. Um, I'll talk about it more as I kind of discuss my journey with it. But Pleasure, I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, it's also as a painful film to watch as well. Um, but it was a great release, nonetheless. Next, we're going to talk about a 101 Films. Uh, a classic in my books in terms of why I love horror today. Uh, one that scared me when I first initially watched it, and I'm talking about Jeepers Creepers. I watched this back in the day. I kind of credit this and I Am Legend are the movies that kind of switched my mind onto horror. It's like I got scared from those films, but those are the ones that like kind of got me going, you know, to be like, I'm curious about this genre. Um, I, I've seen this movie quite a bit of times. Um, hate the director. The director's not a good person. Um, but the, the story is a really cool one and I really like the design here uh, of this film um, and I had to pick it up I, I never owned it and I never got the Screen Factory release so I got the 101 release and so I'm definitely happy to have this film alright so continuing on during my extravagant uh, times of just getting as many movies as possible I saw this movie and I saw the spine and I'm like oh my gosh I haven't seen this physically out in real life because it only has like really a DVD release here in the States. If it does a Blu-ray release, I think it's gone. But I'm talking about Hidden, Cache. It's uh, Michael Haneke's film. I don't know anything about this movie, but I've been wanting to pick this one up for about 10 years now. And that's how much I've been wanting to watch this movie. So I'm very curious about this. I'm definitely going to set this aside for a really special time. Um, I've heard it's very intense, of course. <laughs> Another Juliet Binoche film. Um, and uh, I guess that was a theme of my journey over here, but I was able to finally get Cache, so I'm super excited about that. These next two releases are from Second Run, which I need to jump into more of their releases as well, but my buddy Chris actually mentioned one of the films and said this is actually one of the best releases from last year in terms of restoration, and I'm talking first about The Circus Tent, and that is an Indian film from 1978 uh, directed by Aravidan uh, Govadan. I hope I said that correctly, but this is about a circus coming to town uh, and kind of affecting the lives of the, the townsfolk around it. But I've heard this is a gorgeous looking film. Like I said, Chris, thank you for the shout out on this. This was on sale, so I was also able to pick up this as well. This is The Silence Before Bach and Amandanza, two films by Pere Portabella. Uh, these are two Spanish films from 2007 and 2008. Uh, I just was, you know, kind of 
captured by this and then looking and reading the back and kind of reading about the architecture about it all. Um, yeah, it's about European history plus architecture and art and music and that's right up my alley. So I definitely had to do the two for, you know, I think 15 quid or whatever it was. All right, so next we're going to talk about a movie that I believe that Elliot just covered on his on his channel. This just came out from the BFI. It's Chocolat from Denis Claire, uh, <laughs> Claire Denis. I did that backwards. I love Claire Denis' work that I've seen so far, obviously Beau Travail being my favorite, but I've heard Chocolat is a film to also check out. I remember back when I watched the Johnny Depp version of this film, a very completely different word uh, film, but it's just the same title, obviously. Uh, this came up, and so I was definitely curious about that, but that was a long, long time ago. So seeing a proper release of it from the BFI, very curious about this. It's a new 4K restoration approved by Claire Denis, so I'm very curious about this. It looks terrific and something right up my alley. Uh, next is a movie that I didn't know about, really. I did, and I didn't, but I didn't know that it had like a release, and I'm talking about Dark Star. This is John Carpenter's first film. This is like a spoof of 2001 A Space Odyssey with very low budget college student film. Uh, it's got, a, I guess, a tumultuous history. I watched this and I'll talk about it more on my journey, but what a fun film with, has some, some boring elements as well, just cause it's, it's, you know, it's a student film, but uh, I enjoyed it and I can see the writing on the wall for his future films that he would do. There was also a sale on some uh, HMV kind of premium collection films which I've picked up a few in the past, like So in the Green, Jason and the Argonauts. But I was also to pick up um, these two, Waiting for Guffman and An Escape to Victory. Waiting for Guffman, another film just like Caché, is one that I've seen on many lists that I've, I've been wanting like to get this release for the longest time. But I never, I never saw it in the wild, so I, I'm like, okay, now's my chance. Know nothing about it, but I know it's terrific. The other thing, too, is to get Escape to Victory, um, which I have seen. It's a John Huston film. Uh, I was over, you know, in England during the the Euro, so this was like I'm very enraptured in football now. I'm very curious about it, so I'm gonna be jumping into that world a little bit now too, um, just because it's exciting to be around that. But Escape to Victory got Sylvester Stallone, Max von Sydow, and Pele <laughs> of all people, um, you know, just in this really cool kind of World War II meets Great Escape. But I'll, I'll cover my adventure with this movie. Um, uh, you know, here in a bit, but this is a fun one, uh, to say the least. Speaking of not fun, uh, this documentary is one that I've been wanting to watch for the longest time, but I need to get the stomach to watch it. I'm talking about The Act of Killing. I was able to pick up this from Dog Wolf, and this is a surreal film, because in the 60s, uh, Indonesia, Indonesia had a mass murder uh, and a regime change, uh, and the people who were involved in this movie, the people who were involved in that regime change, are playing themselves reenacting the carnage uh, as the victims and the perpetrators. See, I don't need to say any more, but I, I know this is going to be an intense film to watch, but I've been wanting to watch it for some time now uh, just to kind of see what that experience looks like. Um, and maybe, maybe it's going to be a bad experience. I don't know. Next is a fun movie from uh, the Duplass brothers, who I'm a huge fan of. And I, I wanted to check out this movie. I didn't know it existed. I'm talking about Baghead. So this is from 101 Films as well. And this has an early Greta Gerwig in it as well. And this is like a student film, it feels like. Kind of comedy, indie. I, don't, I can't remember what um, the term that is used for this type of film that turns into a horror film. And it's just about four friends trying to make a horror film. But I'll cover this a little bit more in depth um, as I go uh, through my journey as well. And speaking of journeys, this one I was able to watch out of darkness. On almost, on, I almost watched it on the airplane, but uh, apparently I had some scenes cut from it. So I'm just like, nah, I'm not gonna watch that. I'll just wait uh, to watch it when I get home. But I picked this up at FOP over in Manchester, and uh, I was just, I've been wanting to watch this movie for some time now. Uh, but I'll talk about this really great atmospheric horror film. Um, with some interesting twists a little bit later. And the last film that I want to mention before we kind of shut this whole thing down is a movie that was recommended by my buddy Davey. Uh, thank you so much for recommending this. And it is Lola. This is a found footage film kind of set in World War II. And it's about two sisters who invent this machine that has like it can tap into radio waves and, t and television uh, in the future. And this kind of backfires for them because they can start seeing the future and kind of helping the allies during the war. But 
some things might go awry. But I'm not going to go too much in depth with it. I thought this was a really creative film. Um, I And I adore Davey for recommending me this. But that is what I picked up for my titles. Um, I hope I was able to talk a little bit about some of the movies that I've watched. But like I said, I'll get more in depth with them on my journal when I do this next week. Um, and kind of cover what I've been doing for the week and my week back. And But I want to say thank you all so much for watching this video. I know it's a long one, but I had plenty of things to do all, all my travels over to the UK. And I want to give a special thanks to all my friends uh, that I was able to see and all the people that I eventually will meet when I go back over there for the third time or the fourth time. I'm very, very excited and very blessed to have those people in my life. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Give it a like, comment down below, share. Hit the notification bell, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'm not Johnson around.